Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us webinar today. My name is Ching Nguyen. I'm technical application spe specialist, Dolomite. So today's webinar is one of the webinar series. We call it Microfoodix 101 with Dolomite. So with the aim of the webinar series is uh, to spread out uh, the microfoodic micro technologies, uh, knowledge to the world. So this webinar series will be delivered uh, uh, on every last Thursday of each month along 2021. Um, so uh, today uh, in this webinar, so we will learn about the fundamental microfoodic uh, and its application in uh, 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 micro, uh, droplet generation and uh, particles generation. So let me share my screen. Okay. Yeah. So uh, today is. Uh, Agenda, the agenda so will be including the presentation uh, and the next section is the demonstration uh, with uh, our uh, the systems as you can see so behind me uh, and the final section is the Q&A section so if you have any question during my presentation please write down the question in the question box or chat box so I will try to answer all of your questions uh, in the Q&A section so uh, today presentation will be including the con uh, including uh, the introduction to dolomite uh, and uh, what's microfluidic and why microfluidic and how can microfluidic be used for the droplet and buffer generation and making particles so dolomite is part of black Chain group we develop designs and share the market's leading product through our global leading brand such as Dolomite providing the cutting edge pro product for microfluidic and particle works uh, provide the precision engineers nano and micro materials and Dolomite bios uh, providing the innovate product for high output single cell research. So we are a global company with headquarters in Royston, United Kingdom, uh, and uh, we have office in the United States, Japan, in Vietnam, and we have uh, wide distributors networks in more than 25 countries. So Dolomite uh, developed and sell the microfluidic uh, product uh, in both of the lab scale and the production scales with uh, designing and manufacturing the complete solution as well as uh, the custom design surfactant and reagents. So our product system uh, uh, can be applied in many, many uh, uh, application uh, ranks we including the drug discovery and deliveries. Uh, for example, we uh, synthesis, uh, we provide system to synthesis pol polymers, particle and nanoparticle like PLGAs, uh, microparticle. As you, you can see um, in the graphs in the right hand, so it's showing the, the PLGAs uh, microparticle, which very model dispersed uh, was synthesized by the, using the microfluidic method. And we can, uh, provide the precision particle engineering uh, to apply in the food and cosmetics, uh, cosmetics academic research, and many more. And we also provide the custom engineering uh, solutions, for example, like uh, to uh, design the custom chip or interface and connector and uh, 3D print microfluidic. As you can see uh, uh, in this image, it's a fluidic factory. We can provide it with a very fast and quickly uh, and uh, Reach uh, precisely uh, the microfluidic uh, from uh, microfluidic chip from the polymers, and we also uh, can we provide the, uh, the device we use in lab and chip for, for example, like diagnostic or analytical treatment or environment, environmental monitoring. So we have Dolomite particle engineering team is a team of chemists and engineers which focus to produce high performance nanoparticle and microparticles using the microfluidic and chemistry, flow chemistry. So we focus on biomedical and pharmaceutical industries such as uh, in drug encapsulation or drug deliveries uh, by using the polymers. We also supply startup products such as the particles and uh, emulsion stabilizers, which uh, uh, help to stabilize the uh, 
product after generations. And we also advise the customer in on micro product setup and processes. And if required, we can do group principles projects for our customers before of the before of the uh, equipment purchase. So, what's the microfluidics? Actually, so on Wikipedia, the microfluidics is a multidisciplinary uh, field of intersecting engineering, physics, chemistry, biochemistry, nanotechnology, and biotechnology, with the practical application to design of the system in which small volume of fluid will be handled. However, uh, in more simple term, uh, the is microfluidics can be composed of two parts. So it's including the micros and fluidic. So micro is everything uh, handling the object around the micrometer size. Uh, the other part of the world is the fluidic, is the fluidic that covers the gas and liquids. So they will be assume the shape of the set of the vessels that they are ported into. So the distinguish of Z from solids uh, is uh, solids resist shear strain, but liquid and gas we, uh, do not uh, resist shear strain. So with microfluidic technology, it, uh, we can do the formation of the highly monodispersed droplet in range of the micrometer to 100 micrometer with the complex structure, for example, uh, the emulsion or double emulsion or multiple emulsion or encapsulate the gas bubbles or xenus particle and hybrid material. Also, the droplet can be used as a micro reactor to uh, create the complex formation uh, uh, as a sample can be confined and dilutes or made uh, split or analyzed. So why we use microfluidic? So microfluidic since its inception has gone uh, into direct, uh, to different uh, uh, direction. So the first uh, direction is doing the thing better. So improving the process quality, obtaining a better ear. And second direction is doing the thing that could not be done earlier, analyzing the analyzing very small fluid sample. So here is some example to explain to why we use the microfluidic. So if the, for, for, for the first direction, doing the thing better, if you uh, see the bottom right images, it is larger stack of the agro place, uh, which uh, is done in the biology, biology lab all over the world. So the inserts, uh, the black one in here, is a microarray which is appro approximate uh, uh, one fingernail and it contains more samples than uh, own place you have in here. So microfluidic has helped into automating the tedious workflow, improved sample handling and obtain the faster results. For uh, the set second direction, so doing the thing not possible by other techniques. So if uh, in the few years ago, so if you uh, go to cl a clinic, so you would have a very larger string with a larger needle to take blood to test you. However, nowadays with the development of microfluidic sensor, like the one so in here, so the sample amount, the information can be obtained from the fraction of the sample size, and this has massive Im implication in thing like genome sequencing or poyo care diagnostic. So today application uh, are wiring of the application area, for example, like my molecular biology, particle, nanoparticle generation and manufacture. Uh, simulation of porous media uh, for or in gas industry or continuous flow chemistry in uh, organic synthesis. So in this case, the driver is a very uh, is high value of cost and the time save and new capacity and process improvement uh, rather than low cost of system and experiment. So um, in the next this slide uh, is uh, next section. It will be uh, focused on the application uh, of the microfluidic on in the droplet and buffer generation, and again. Uh, 
I just remind, so if you have any question in the uh, introduction part, so uh, please write out the question in uh, on the question box or the chat box. So I will answer on in the, uh, the, the final section in the Q&A section. So um, the basic concept of the microcomputing technology, as we know, so in traditional uh, methods, the most emulsification process we work uh, through input of the energy into uh, the two invisible uh, liquids. So we mix the two invisible liquids in the uh, batch reactor and apply energy like storing or homogenizer or sonication so to make the emulsion. So because uh, too many factors affect on the process like temperature, gradient, uh, the concentration, uh, storing, so it will lead to uh, very poorly dispersed sample. And also uh, high put energies High input energy will uh, destroy the material being captured uh, if we're using the traditional method. And on the other hand, with the microfluidic, so the droplets uh, are pinched of two uh, of the with the minimal input of energy. So we pinch up the uh, droplet the, through the uh, micro channels of junctions. So so it's we we very we got a, uh, this is a continued process, so it's very easy to control the parameters. So it will uh, lead to a very mono dispersed of the droplets. And also, uh, with a very small amount of energy uh, input, so uh, the material being encapsulated uh, can be uh, very stable uh, uh, during the process. So, what do you need for running microfluidic experiment? So you, you will need a lot of things to run a microfluidic experiment, but the three main things uh, we mentioned in here is first is a way of moving the fluid. Is, so you need a pump to drive the fluid into the chip. And the second is a way to adjust the surface tension of the fluid. So you need a surfactant uh, to stabilize the product, the droplets, uh, after the droplet generation. And finally, you need a micro device where application run. So you, it means you, you need a micro chip uh, so to generate the droplet inside the chip, Justin. So here, showing some one example of the, our single channel system we use in the ID lab. Uh, uh, so it will be, as you can see, it will be including the three press pump and it's a connect to the, the micro, uh, micro fluidic chip uh, by the, using the tubing and the connector and the valves. And the micro fluidic chip uh, is located under uh, microscope with high speed camera. We can visualize all the uh, continuous process uh, uh, on the side uh, the micro fluidic chip. So uh, depending on the different uh, application you uh, want to do, so uh, different chip design or different chip geometries, uh, chip channel geometries uh, can be provided. So for example, we can uh, uh, do with the single channels, the droplet uh, chip junction or, or fine input chip uh, to make up the, uh, the laminar flow uh, or the micro mixer chip. So uh, for this single channel system, we um, have production rates around uh, one kilogram per month. So it's very useful in IND's uh, research. For drop, uh, droplet and particle type, so that's a nice generic way to make a simple droplet from the two common two components. So we can make, for example, we can make, we, we can make the liquids in li uh, gas, uh, for example, like liquid aeros uh, aerosol. Or we can make solids in gas like solids aerosol. So today, the discussion is about the system with liquids continuous space like liquids in liquids uh, to make the emulsion like meal, maisonnaire, or hand cream. So it's many many variations are possible. So this slide showing the the way the method to make up the drop uh, particle or drop the side with the side different. Uh, so for large size, the rubber size, like uh, from 100 micrometer to up to higher than millimeter size. So we usually use a T junction uh, stream to make uh, the bigger size droplet. The medium size droplet from, range from the micrometer to 100 micrometer. 
So we usually use a focusing uh, fo uh, flow focusing stream to make a small droplets uh, by the uh, extension chip with a small a smaller chip section. And finally, uh, if you want to make up the nanoparticles, so with, with the particle in nanometer size, uh, like less than uh, one micrometer in nanometer size, so we're using the core flow stream. So in this case, we use uh, the particles, nanoparticle size will be formed by uh, the mixing uh, of the two stream when the pumping into the chip junction. This slide showing the droplet generation mode. So we have uh, many, many modes of the droplet uh, generation. It depending on the parameters uh, in controls. So for example, we can have a dripping region so we can provide, uh, produce the mono dispersed of droplet uh, by the dry uh, condition parameter of light, like flow rate ratio. So we also can have a setting regimes uh, if we pumping uh, too fast of the uh, droplet uh, stream. So it's we we make up the the lamina flow between the two stream, or we can make a child stick uh, uh, modes by just uh, pumping slowly of the droplet, sorry, of the droplet uh, phase. So it's just a uh, just ratio of the flow rate. So we can we can uh, make a chaotic mode, or we have a backflow mode if the pressure imbalance. So if you have a look at the right hand of the graph, so it's uh, 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 showing the variation of the rate size and uh, frequency by just changing for droplet and carry pressure. So you can see when we changing droplet pressure uh, in here, so the droplet size can increase and uh, it. We will also we will receive uh, the limit of the carry backflow, or uh, if we when we increase the carry pressure, uh, so we can also obtain the limit of the droplet backflow. And also uh, we also can uh, got the setting limits uh, when we increase both of the droplet pressure and uh, the droplet back, uh, droplet uh, and carry pressure. For controlling the droplet size, we have two main methods to control the droplet size. So the first method is using different uh, deep junction size. We can changing the droplet size. Using the larger junction can form the larger droplet size. Using smaller junction, we can receive the very small, uh, smaller uh, droplet size. So the second method is uh, changing the flow rate ratio. Uh, of the continuous and droplet phase. So in this case, uh, the droplet side will be uh, uh, controlled within the same chip. So for example, if you see in the first images, the first video, so we, when we increase the flow rate of the continuous phase in here, so uh, it will be decrease uh, the droplet side. Our second video showing that if you increase the uh, flow rate of uh, uh, droplet phase in here, so you can increase the droplet size. In the case of the increase of both continuous and uh, continuous and droplet phase flow rates, they will increase the production rate. So here shows uh, showing some advanced droplet generation. So we can make a more complex droplet tie if required by using microfluidic. For example, we can make a double emulsion like here, droplet in droplet, or multiple emulsion in here many droplets inside one droplet. Or you can make up Zenith particles, so it means you pumping two different reagents uh, uh, into the one droplet, and you can make up the droplet contain two reagents, and uh, by the chemical reaction, so you can got a, a particle with uh, heterogeneous uh, properties on the surface, so it can be applied in many, many uh, fields. So uh, in the, this section, I will show uh, the, the application of the microfluidic in uh, the making particles. Again, so if you have any question uh, about the bubble and droplet generation, please write out uh, the question in uh, the Q&A section, uh, in, in, in the question box, and I will try to answer in Q&A section. So microfluidic Fluidic particle generation uh, is now is a major application uh, area for uh, our team for the Lumite. 
So we have established the particle engineering group to work on application and the major particles type work are API encapsulation in PLGAs, uh, which includes the encapsulation of aqueous soluble API using the multiple emulsion like I showed before, uh, with the sliding from the nanometer to uh, micrometer. We also can make a liposome generation uh, for, like uh, nano liposomes or uh, zen liposome. We also make hydrosols uh, like agarose or alginase or polymer like polystyrene. Here, so example of the uh, dolomite particle engineering uh, uh, team. So we make the PLZ particle by uh, solvent extraction method. So we can make very mono display of the 40 micro, uh, micrometer of the PLZ particles. We can make a PEZ to DAP by using the, the microfluidic with the light polymerization. Or we can make up the agro uh, by using thermal treatment or the alginate bit with the cross-linking polymerization uh, reaction. This slide showing is one example how to use microfluidic to uh, produce uh, PLGA micro particles. As we know, PLGA is a biodegradable polymers and it's FDA approved, so it allow, uh, allows to, uh, to use in the drug uh, or pharmace uh, pharmaceutical industry. So it's allowed to control release of drug or API uh, is an active pharmaceutical ingredient within the body. And uh, compared to traditional method, this microfluidic method can be used to encapsulate both the hydrophobic and hydrophilic API or the drug, uh, which is only possible in microfluidic. So if you have a look at the right hand, the footers in here, so it's just so one, one example uh, to make micro uh, particle PLGAs uh, by uh, microfluidic. So in this case, PLGA will be dissolved in the solvent, organic solvent like DCM. So and it, it will pump into the droplet phase. And the uh, continued phase, this phase should be the water or uh, PBS solution. We, uh, we contain the PBA uh, uh, polyvinyl uh, alcohol uh, as the surfactant to stabilize the droplet after formation. So uh, after uh, the droplet formation, we, we contain the uh, PLGA and DCM inside the uh, dispel in water. So uh, DCM will be evaporate. Uh, out to the droplets and uh, with the mechanisms uh, showing the, this in this diagram. So as you can see in this diagram, so it's the DCM will be transferred uh, from the droplets and through its continuous phase, water phase, and into the atmosphere. And this photo showing the solvent evaporation over the time on glass line. So as you can see with the hundreds of micrometer of droplets, uh, PLGA's uh, DCM into the water. So after five minutes, the droplets, the DCM the evaporates outside. So it's called the droplet uh, shrinkage. And after that, it will uh, generate the, the only PLGA microparticles with the size around the 10 micrometer and dispersed in the water. Here's this video showing the process uh, example uh, for uh, DCM evaporization. So we have. 86 micrometer of PLJ uh, and DCM droplets, and after five minutes, DCM evaporization and uh, droplets shrinkage. And finally, PLJ nanoparticles, uh, microparticle with final diameter is 24 micrometer, uh, is formed. So this slide showing so one of the example of the hydrozero based uh, generation by using microfluidic method. So this one, uh, this hydrogel is manufactured by both chemical zelation uh, or perm thermal shutting. So with the chemical zelation, so in this case, so two reagents are combined into the microfluidic chip. So it will be pinched up at the chip junction and to make the droplet and mixing uh, droplet will be contained of two reagents. So zelation occurs in flow or in the collection vessel by just uh, the means of the introduction of the third component. So we added three, a third component into uh, the product and the zelation uh, reaction will occur. And the payloads, it 
typically is brought into one on, uh, on one of both of the equal slide. And in the thermal shredding uh, method, so the material will be taken above the zeroing point, so it's melting uh, when the temperature is higher than zeroing point. And after that, the, the viscosity will be reduced, and we can pump the, and the ping up uh, at the temperature control of the chip to make a droplet. And after that, we're cooling down uh, the process and collect the sample uh, at the lower temperature, uh, lower zeroing point temperature, and it will be uh, the, the, the zillation uh, uh, process will be occurs, and we can get the hydrogen rich. So the payload in this case can be brought in one of hot or cold, uh, or cold uh, equals line. And this slide showing the example of the how polymer bead can be made, uh, can be produced by using microfluidic method. So the bits will be uh, manufactured uh, by undertaking a cross-linking reaction or polymerization reaction uh, on the performed droplet. So in, in this case, the polymerization or cross-linking reaction can be initiated by UV initiator or chemical in, uh, initiator or by chemical reagent uh, agent process. So it will be happen inside uh, during the process, continuous process, or uh, even though after the vessel collection or so. So we already talked about the microparticle bead generation. So for the nanoparticles uh, generation, is we use a different method. So in here, so in some example to uh, produce a liposome and the PLZ nanoparticle and another nanoparticles. So in this case, we, we use uh, the, um, the, the process of nucleation and growth to produce the liposome and polymer nanoparticles. So in this case, the polymers will dissolve in the solvent, for example, like alcohol, like acetone or ethanol or isopropanol, and is the cross out uh, by the facing Fast mixing with the anti solvent. So, we use a, uh, the buffer solution or water. We contain a surfactant to stabilize the particle again, the agglomeration. So, the, the, the nanoparticles is believed to uh, form uh, in between the interface of the two stream and crossing out to the chip by the flow. So, in this case, the flow rate ratio is a key parameter to control the particle size. So if you have a look at this one, the flow rate ratio is the, the, the ratio between the continuous phase and the droplet phase. So if we increase the droplet ratio, the, drop, uh, the, the, the flow rate ratio, so the particle size will be decreased. So, and also in uh, in with the uh, API encapsulation uh, in in uh, nanoparticles, so uh, it can be do with uh, in, in in on the droplet phase line. So with liposomes in droplet phase, so it uh, it it contains the aqueous uh, phase. So it is better if uh, using the hydrophilic, we can dissolve in the water phase or the aqueous phase API. And if the in PLGI is a polymer, so uh, the it's a, a hydrophobic phase. So it's it's better to uh, using the hydrophobic uh, API, which dissolve can be dissolved in uh, the organic solvent. We contain the PLGI to be encapsulated inside the PLGI nanoparticles. This one showing the one example of the using the microfluidic uh, flow focusing methods. Uh, by using our system to generate the liposome or lipid nanoparticle system. Um, system. So it will be including the two pump, which one, one pump is contained to pumping the lipid and uh, dispersed in ethanol. And the other pump is uh, for the so, uh, buffer solution uh, we use as a continuous phase. So this will be pumping into the high input microfluidic chip to uh, generate the lamina flow in here, you can see. So the liposome nanoparticle will be formed uh, between the interface of the two stream and crossing out to the chip. So summary. So we what we learned about today is with the microfluidic. So it's a new way of doing known things better. 
uh, and it's a new way of doing the things that can be done in any other way. And Dolomite can target many key applications in the area of emotion and the particles. For example, PLGA micro and nanoparticles, liposome lipid nanoparticle, or polymeric microparticle, nanoparticle synthesis as well. And it can be applied for API encapsulation, foods and cosmetics, or catalyst, or quantum quantum and many, 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 many applications can be uh, used uh, with the microfluidic. Okay, so I finished the presentation uh, section in here. So uh, we, uh, we will move to uh, a live demo with the hours uh, next uh, behind me, uh, the system uh, for the uh, simple droplet generation. Uh, and next uh, step is uh, next section is the Q and A section. So again, if you have any questions, please write down the question in the question box, and we will move to the Q and A section later. So okay, I will switch on the, my camera to showing the system with the demo section. Okay, I hope now you can see the system. So, okay, in here, so this is a single channel system um, with the single channel system with the three pressure pump, you can see in here, uh, and the microfluidic chip with uh, locate uh, the, under the micro high speed uh, digital microscope to uh, visualize the process under the, uh, inside the microfluidic chip. So uh, in here, we have uh, two different types of pressure pump. So one is a, a bit, uh, the advanced pressure pump, you can see in here, in which you can control the old parameter by just using the boot uh, software, FCC software, uh, and uh, by using the manual pump, by using the knob uh, controls, uh, knob controls uh, uh, on the bottom surface of the pump in here, you can see in here, so the pump will be included in the, the pressure chamber. We contain the sample inside here. So the sample will be uh, driving out uh, by applying the pressure inside the chamber. So, and the flow rate will be measured by the flow rate sensor, as you can see in here, uh, and uh, displaced by the sensor displayed. And uh, we have a second pump, pressure pump type is the basic pump, which uh, just only allows you to control the parameter by just only using software. And also this one uh, is, uh, we have the remote chamber pressure, chambers. So we uh, allow you to uh, storing, to do the storing or heating uh, by putting in the water bed or, or put on the hot lid with the storing by side. So it's again, it can be connect, connect with the flow rate sensor to uh, uh, control the flow rate of fluid and the sensor displays uh, instead of the, the sensor uh, display here, uh, sensor interface is uh, instead of the sensor display. So it will record the uh, flow rate uh, values on the software, not uh, inside the, uh, uh, not, not on the, the, the the pump itself. So the fluid will be uh, connected from the pressure chamber pump to flow rate sensor and to the one way uh, one way barrels. So it can be switched uh, to allow you to uh, to uh, continue the flow or stop the, the flow the process during the experiment. So it's very useful when. Uh, you want to stop the experiment to and change the microfluidic chip to uh, to do the different uh, experiment. Um, and here, so the tubing we connect with the microfluidic with the microfluidic chip. So in this case, so microfluidic uh, chip in here we use uh, is uh, the single droplet chip with three four chip uh, designs. Uh, as you can see in here, so. This one, I'm not sure if the, you can see it's quite clearly or not, but it will be including the micro channel inside. So with the type the three pores, uh, the design, T-junction, as a T-junction, uh, X-junction, sorry. 
So uh, it, it will allow you to uh, making the droplets with the size the hundred micrometers. With uh, this one is the uh, hundred micrometer droplet chip, and the chip will be connected uh, the, with the, the tubing by the edge interface in here, which model in here, and uh, visualized by the Meros high speed uh, digital microscope, which uh, allow you to uh, decode the. Uh, the very high speed uh, spontaneous uh, process, slow process. And we also have this one is uh, the, the metals TCUs, uh, the motors, which allow you to control it very precisely the temperature range from the zero to one to 100 degrees C. So it's very helpful when you do the process uh, by the temperature controls. Okay, so. Um, Today, uh, I, will, I would like to show you the, the demos uh, for uh, how to make the droplets by using the droplet chip. Uh, so in this case, we use a 100 micrometer droplet chip uh, with, uh, to make the uh, uh, water in oil droplet. So uh, the one pump will contain the oil with the surfactant and the other pump will uh, contain the water. So water, uh, in this experiment is the droplet phase and uh, continuous phase or dispersed phase will be the oil. So I would like to share the, the FCC software which can uh, allow you to see uh, to see the, the process by using the our software. So now how about now? So it's okay to see my screen with the software now. Uh, okay, so this one uh, showing the screen, sorry, screen uh, the three uh, component in use now. So this one is the first farm, which contains the oil in here. Uh, and the second one is the water uh, farm, contains water in here, it's a droplet phase. So we can have two uh, two options to control the uh, flow rates of the fluids. The first option is using pressure, control the pressure. So you change the pressure, you can uh, allow you to change the flow rate. Or the other option you can select is the flow. So you can control exactly the your flow, uh, your flow rate by just uh, uh, just uh, uh, Changing the flow, uh, changing the pressure in the chamber. So in this case, we will do uh, this one is the microscope with uh, image at the chipset inside. Sorry, I moved up, moved up a little bit to help you to see the better chip junction. Okay, so now you can see clearly the uh, the chip junction size with the three D point here. So in this one and this this slide is the dispersed phase, uh, the continuous phase, and this slide is the droplet phase. So currently I am opening the the valves of the oil phase. So so now you can see uh, I, I I just changed uh, the applied two thousand millibars for oil phase to pumping the oils uh, to the trainers. And this one is the water phase. So now I already applied the water, but uh, there's no flow. So it means I need to open the valves in here. So you can see when I open the valve. So you can see the the droplets droplet will be formed uh, at the chip junction. So as I discussed uh, the before in presentation, so we can change the flow rate ratio to controls the droplet side. So in this case, for example, when I increase the pressure or uh, the of the uh, water phase or droplet phase, so it will be the flow rate will be increased. You can see. So it will make the bigger droplet side. In this case, as you can see. So what happens if I increase more the pressure of droplet phase? So now. That thing region will be happen uh, as I said. Uh, what kind of the mode of the flow uh, uh, during the microfluidic 
a process. You can see it's, uh, the, the jetting regions will be happening. So in this case, so we can make the lamina flow between the two streams. So this will be applied in the nanoparticles generation uh, process. Again, I will reduce the pressure of the water in this case. So again, it will assert you to allow you uh, uh, to get to obtain the, the droplet with the very monodispersed size. In here, what happens if I decrease more? So we can obtain the small droplet size. Same thing if I increase the, 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 the continuous phase, like oil phase, for example, 2020. So it will be when I increase the flow rate of the dispersed, uh, the continuous phase, so the droplet size will be decreased like this. Okay, 2003. So it's it will be increased to the 15 micrometer per minute. So, so drop the size will be decreased. So this one showing very, very, um, very easy process uh, to make a drop list by using microfluidic and it's very easy to change the parameter to obtain the, the what the uh, drop is size by using the microfluidic. Yeah. Okay, so I think so. Uh, this is uh, I, I I I would like to finish this demonstration section here. So and we will move to uh, quickly to uh, the Q and A section. So again, so if you have any uh, question, please write out write out uh, the question in the the chat box. So I will try to answer your question. Anyone have a question? Please. Okay, I got one question. Is there any evidence that shows uh, or was recipient uh, uh, deepening uh, occur during the particle formation by flow focusing methods? If so, would it affect to the API encapsulation efficiency? Um, um, uh, actually, there's no uh, by using the microfluidic. Uh, just by microfluidic, uh, the microscope using, so it's, we cannot see any uh, process uh, or particles, uh, nanoparticles generation by uh, um, using the flow focusing methods. So uh, to do the process with, um, to, to, to see the, how the, the API encapsulation efficiency, so we, we should do and it's a uh, post analysis uh, uh, equipment like uh, uh, the, some microscope images uh, like CM or TM or with the APLZ uh, method. So, okay, is there any? Okay, so. Um, I don't think you know, I don't think it will be effect on the API encapsulation. Okay, the next question: Can we apply the hybridization of DNA inside the microfluidic chip? Hybridization in DNA? Yes, uh, we. Um, yeah, for the hybridization process of DNA inside the microfluidic chip, um, yeah, it's a good question. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, 
I think we can uh, encapsulate the NA inside the microfluidic uh, uh, by inside the microfluidic chip with uh, uh, just only DNA is inside. Uh, so the hybridization of DNA, um, I believe it would be the do at post analysis process. Um, in this term, okay, so I, I, I would try to uh, reply you uh, the answer by the email letter. So it's a matter for us now because it's a little bit uh, in details of the application. Okay, next question is just how to control the surface free drug in PLGA hydrophilic drug particles? Um, okay, to control the surface free drug uh, in PLGA hydrophilic drug particles. So uh, for hydrophilic uh, drugs particles, we um, usually using the two methods uh, to produce, uh, to encapsulate uh, the inside the PLGA. So one method is using the, the multiple emulsion, which contains the small droplet of water or con uh, the, the, the aqueous phase, aqueous droplets inside the polymer phase like PLGA. So in this case, the, the drug will be dissolved in the hydrophilic uh, phase, like the upward phase of water phase, and encapsulated by multiple emulsion. Uh, in, in, or the other method we can uh, make a suspension of the hydrophilic drug uh, inside the, the PLGA uh, solution. And after that, we can make up the, uh, the drug that we contain the uh, uh, suspension of the drug inside the PLJ particles in this case. Yes, thank you for, for very, very good question in, in this. So for the other question, if um, I do not reply to own contents, I will try to reply with you by uh, send you by email. So please uh, give give me more information about the email address so I will try to answer you. Ah, you already have. Okay. So is there any any question? Any question more? Okay, so if you don't have any questions, so uh, we I would like to close uh, this webinar today. So if you have further questions, uh, so you can type in the, uh, the questions uh, or write down the questions to send uh, us by emails. So we provide the, the, the email, our, our email address in the chat box. So if you have any question, please write out the question and send us by emails. So again, uh, to before the closing the today webinar, so I would like to mention again, so this webinar series will be delivered on every last uh, Tuesday of each month. Uh, so please accept to do my microfluidic website for registration for next year's section. So the next section will be uh, to focus on the uh, the key component for mic running microfluidic, for example, like pump or surfactant or chip. So we will discuss more detail about the, the that components uh, in the next section. Yeah, thank you very much for the attention. I so I I looking forward to see you in the next section. Thank you very much. <laughs>